good day students today i'm just going to describe the electrical protection score practical manual which is used to teach the power engineering stream at btech level in cape peninsula university of technology belville campus i am dr s krishnamurthy a lecturer for the electrical protection course in cpt the exercise covers four experiment the first experiment will try to give an overview of the time over current protection setting using SEL 751 feeder protection relay model the second experiment will aim to create a time over current protection coordination between the relays using alstom kcg G142 relay model the third experiments will provide the overview of the long transmission line distance protection scheme using SEL421 relay model the last experiment will aim to create a differential protection scheme for the transformer using SEL 487E relay model let me start with this exercise which going to give the overview of the time over current protection setting i plan to prepare a four video clips each will compromise the description of the each experiments from 1 to 4 as you seen in the lab manual the aim of the first exercise to implement the time over current protection setting and to teach the students for the validations and verifications of the time over current settings in the dix island environment figure 1 provides the fiber bus power system network as seen in the manual i think this is a simple power system model which trying to give an overview of the power flow of this network if you look at this diagram the external grid will supply the power to the network and it can pass through the transmission lines between bus 1 and 2 we have a parallel transmission line which is rated for 33 kv and which is stepped down to 11 kv with the transformers and further it is feeding to the 11 kv and in the downstream you have another transformer which stepped down further to 11 kv to 400 volt and we have a loss that is feeding at the 400 voltage rating the aim of this experiment especially for the protection setting aspect we try to use the SCL 751 feeder protection relay at bus 3 as shown in this figure so basically we need it's just a over current relay so we need a ct which able to measure the current flow through this line and it can able to configure the relay settings and if for instance if you assume there is a fault at bus 3 the ct will able to sense the current and which can enables the output of the ct to the relay and the relay will able to 
see if there is a fault on the network it can able to issue a trip signal to the breaker and the breaker can open so let's come back to the modeling aspect of the power system network in dixelon environment in this manual you can see the data for the power system network the bus data is given in table 1.1 and the grid data was given in 1.2 and the transformer data is given in table 1.3 and the transmission line data is given in table 1.4 and the load data is given in table 1.5 and your instrument transformers that is basically your ct settings is given in table 1.6 and your over current protection relay settings is given in table 1.7a for the phase elements and 1.7b for the ground elements and also there is a descriptive text is written it's help to student to understand how to implement the protection setting in the dixelon environment and also it giving and different scenarios to verify the protection settings of the SCL Sunfire and Relay. Um, okay, next we move on to the Dixelent environment and to discuss in detail how to implement the network in the Power Factory environment. As you see in the Dixelent software, the fibers network will be modeled as shown in the screenshot as we discussed in the manual the grid will feed the power to the network and it can pass through the parallel transmission lines and the step down transformers from 11 kV to I think 33 kV to 11 kV and from that this 11 kV is for the step down here to 400 volt and we have a customer that is feeding at 400 volt and we also have a customers they are feeding at 11 kvs okay the first exercise i try to give the overview how to implement the power system network from the scratch in the dix island power factory environment and from the second exercise onwards I am just directly describing the protection settings in the Dixieland environment. I am not going to provide the descriptions how to implement the power system network in the Dixieland environment from second experiment onwards. Okay, let's start the new project from the scratch and first we try to model the network and the second aspect we need to implement the settings especially the power system settings for each components and then we move to the protection aspect okay first we need to go to the file menu from that you can go to the new and select a project from the project you can give any project let's say we can name it as this project as exercise 1 time over current relay okay fine now we name the grid leave it as a grid and the new draft project will be created um, just want to explain the tools in the Dixieland environment and please also note this one is created with the Dixieland version 15.2 but the latest one 2016 is available 
and in your right side you can see the libraries where we can able to select the different power system components to model the power system network for instance we have a bus bus and different types of bus bus available and we also have a transformers from the library the two winding transformers there are different types of transformers available and there is a transmission line and if you looking for the external grid and if you looking for the shape depends on the different types of machines synchronous and asynchronous machines i think these are the basic components that we going to build our power system network okay according to the single line diagram we need to create a five bus power system network as shown in the lab manual in figure 1.1 okay so we basically we need a five buses and then the grid will connected and the lines and the transformers and the loads will be connected respectively according to the diagram that is given in the lab manual so for the bus bar we can select and bus bar and we need to place the bus bar make sure the spacing that we can align that is bus 1 we can just need five bus bars let's randomly click it so we have a five bus bars and once we finish the buses we need to terminate from the library so just press an escape key okay then we need to rotate the direction of the buses so we can go so next step we need to align the bus bar so just right click the bus and select the option rotate and we can rotate for clockwise and repeat the process for the rest of the buses we need to move just select the bus and drag down the position of the bus wherever you want the network i'll align the network and make sure the spacing between the network is enough and also the bus numbers that we called as terminals default name but later stage we can also rename it to a specific bus numbers what you looking for okay the next step we need to copy the transmission line i think if you look back the manual we have a grid on bus 1 okay let's start with the grid on bus 1 so there will be external grid either we use a synchronous machines or grid but in this case this whole network will provided by the external grid so select the grid and place it wherever you want in the network and then connect it to the cubicles of the network next we have a transmission lines that is a two transmission lines parallel lines connected between bus 1 and 2 so we are looking for the lines from the library and select the first line and you can connect it to and the second line the parallel line so you can connect it to next we have a transformers escape to remove the lines from the library the two winding transformers there are different shapes but they are same with the properties so either you can use 
shape this shape or you can use this shape but both are the same so I'm going to use this one so the transformer connected between your bus 2 and bus 3 okay next we have a transmission line this is connected between this bus and this bus and then we have a transformer again a 2nd transformer between bus 4 and your last bus bus 5 okay now we have three loads we can see at bus 3 bus 4 and bus 5 so we need to connect those loads so we can look for the loads from the library uh, there are different types of load models available in the li library it's a general load medium voltage load low voltage load but in this case we this exercise we are trying to use the general load so select general load the first load is connected in your bus 3 so we can keep it here then we can connect it to bus 3 the second load is connected in bus 4 so we can keep it here and we can connect it to your bus 4 we have load 3 okay then the last load on your bus 5 Okay, now we model the network as shown in figure 1.1. The next step is to edit the power system components according to the data that is given in table 1.1 to 1.5. Okay, we can carry on. First, we start from the bus. So, go to the bus and select what is the voltage of bus 1 supposed to be 33 kV and the name change to terminal to bus 1 ok next the default everything you can leave it and bus 2 that is also 33 kV that AC and the face technology is ABC bus 3 that's the same way what we did but your bus 3 is supposed to be 11 kV bus 4 this is also supposed to be 11 kV and your last bus bus 5 this is again step down to 400 ok 400 volt ok there we go next we have a grid data for the grid data it's external grid we leave it the name as, as it is and we need to look the load flow and we make sure the bus type is PV bus according to the data that is given in the manual PV bus active power and the voltage set point your active power megawatt supposed to be 2 megawatt and your voltage set point is 1 per unit ok the rest we are happy next line data you can go for line 1 then name this as line 1 ok and then we can see it's a parallel lines yes one parallel lines and we also want to specify the line length 
line length supposed to be 10.14 kilometers sorry one two and the rated current okay we need to set the current we can go for the project and we can select the line type the first one okay now we need to set the line type go to a new project line type and let's name it as line 1 and the rated voltage supposed to be 33 kV and the current rating supposed to be 42.41 kilo amps 58 frequency it's a cable and we need also want to specify the resistance the resistance supposed to be 0 0.3454 and the reactance 0 0.9234 this is a <coughs> line impedance parameters but in some cases if there's options you can change the parameter type either you can instead of reactance you can give a inductance or you can give a subsetance according to the data that you given for in this case we just keep it as reactance per length as per the data given okay we happy with line one and line 2, you can name it as line 2. Okay. And you can go and select a new project. And we can say line 2. And the rated voltage is again 33 kV, kilo volt. And the current is the same because it's a parallel line. The rating of line 1 and line 2 are the same. Okay, and the resistance select the previous data 3454 ohms per kilometers and your reactance is going to be 9234 ohm per kilometer. Okay, we are happy about that, but the line length is the same as the previous one 10.12 kilometer. Okay. Next, we're leading to the last line, line 3, change to line 3, and the line kilometer, 2.67 kilometers, and the type, you can go into line type, new, let's say line 3, and the rated voltage is, rated voltage is 11 kV, and the rated current we can say 12.34 kiloamps and the resistance and reactance 0 0.1204 ohm per kilometers the reactance is 2304 ohm per kilometers okay we are happy about the line parameters next step we want to implement the transformer details so just start from transformer 1 okay for the transformer it's a two ending transformer you just keep transformer 1 for the short naming and we can just go for the new project and we can say the transformer 1 it is a three phase transformer and then the rated power in MVA for the first transformer is 150 MVA as per the data that is given in your manual you can look the transformer data 150 MVA and the short circuit voltage and the copper losses so for the short circuit and copper losses your short circuit is 10 percentage and your copper losses is going to be 
5 kilo volt okay and underneath that you can see it's a positive sequence diagram this uh, options if you select either you can give the short circuit voltage and copper losses otherwise you can give the short circuit voltage and the short circuit voltage uk and maybe you can also have options to select the short circuit voltage and the xr ratios or maybe the reactance and resistance in per, per unit but in this case the transformer data is given as short circuit on copper losses so we are happy about that and the transformer is a three phase transformer and the technology you can change either single phase transformer a single wire earth return etc but in this case we are going to keep it like that and make sure the rated voltage for the HV side and the LV side if you still remember the HV side is going to be 33 kV and the LV side is going to be 11 kV ok and for the load flows we leave it default the system will calculate the load flow values ok that's correct if you want to double click to check you can make sure the transformer rating is 150 MVA HV side is 33 LV side is 11 and your short circuit voltage is 10 your copper loss is 10.5 <coughs> and the zero sequence impedance value if you are trying to implement or test the scenarios for the ground falls okay, then the zero sequence impedance must be taken into okay. for default I leave it for this case ok next we go for transformer 2 for transformer 2 we can say short name TF2 and you go to the type, you select a new project and we change the name to TF2 and the rating for transformer 2 the MBA is 50 MBA and the HV side I think this transformer is going to uh, step down 11 kV to 400 volt ok and the short circuit ratio is 6 percentage and the copper losses is 7.5 kilo volt ok the rest we are happy and the vector group is yn we leave it as default ok if you want you can double check and make sure the data are according to the table 1.3 ok the last one we need to edit the load components starting with load 1 ok so let's make it as load 1 the name go to the type select a new project create a general load there's a two different types of load general load and complex load in this case we are using the general load but I will also explain you a little bit later about the complex load configuration so this is a general load you can make it name as load 1 ok for the load we can go to the type select a new project and general load type ok make sure this is, there are different types of technology 3 phase delta or 3 phase face to face with earth um, three phase Y connected with the neutral and different types of load. In this case, we use three phase delta. Okay. Next, we go to the load flow data. There are different types available. Default is looks like this, but we can change the input mode according to the data. But let me look quickly our data table. We have active power and power factors. So we need to set the type of load active power and power factor that is P and cos phi and the load can be balanced or unbalanced balanced means we have the same loading capacities on each phase of the lines or either if we select an unbalanced we should be able to load 
a different loading capacities on each faces but in this case we used a balance load so the active power of the first load is 0 0.78 megawatt and the power factors is maintaining 0 0.96 and the voltage set point we're trying to make 0 0.9534 Okay, that's all the data in advance. It's a remote control, but we're not playing around that things for this exercise. Next, we move on to the second load. Okay, you can name it as load 2. Okay, again the new project general. And let me say load 2. Okay. And then we go to the load flow. We select again PN cos phi, and we need to set our active power for the load to 0.65 megawatt, and the power factor 0.95, and your set point of the voltage is supposed to be 0.95. 65 okay be happy about that and the last load is a load 3 okay change the name to be load 3 and the type again going to take load 3 make sure the low flow data change to p and cos pi balance load and the active power is going to be 45 megawatt and the power factor hitting 0 0.95 megawatt and the voltage set point sorry this is 92 power factor the voltage set point 0 0.9123 per unit okay Now we model the power system network in the Dixie line and also we change the power system component settings exactly according to their lab manual which is given for the bus data, grid data, transformer data, transmission line data and load data. The next part we need to implement the protection settings especially for the sound 5 on relay model and the CT settings for face and ground elements but before we deal these things we make sure to conduct a load flow and validate the load flow results and verifies the load flow results before we proceed to the protection setting okay to verify the load flow results this uh, tool first need to conduct the load flow this is the tool that you to calculate the load flow and there are different options the first one called as a basic options and the calculation method will be AC load flow balanced and positive sequence but we should also be able to collect conduct and load flow for the unbalanced network by selecting this AC load flow unbalance or for the DC network using the DC load flow but in this case we are going to have to select the AC load flow calculation method which is a balance and positive sequence and also there is a different options for the reactive power control and also the load options but basically I am using the default one and try to execute these things Okay, it looks like the low flow success. Next step, we need to validate the low flow results. But it looks like we are happy about the low flow results. Okay, this will show you about the power flows of the lines and the bus terminals as we seen in this diagram. Okay. 
and these options we can also have a chance to change the display options but just right click and we go to edit format nodes will show you what are the values included for example this box will having a three values one is line to line voltage magnitude in kilovolt and also a voltage magnitude in per unit and the voltage phase angles and we can amend if you want we can amend the rows append the rows and try to include your variables if you want you can select go to and select any variables that you need but in this case i'm just showing an example but it's not necessary okay next we need to validate the low flow results to validate the low flow results okay i just need to go to this one of the tools you can see it's like a specs they called us output calculation analysis and if you click here there's a different option if you want to a grid summary we can execute this one okay then this is a maximize output window icon you can go to the output window and we validate let's see they are using a newton transfer low flow algorithm and the computation is converged within two iterations and the low flow is successful and you can see the summary of the grid results you can see there is no generation because we never used any generators it's only an external in feed it is 1.89 megawatt and also we have the loads which is 1.88 megawatt as the real power and the reactive power of 0.63 megawatt and we can see the MVA capacities the external grid is 2 MVA and the loads is trying to consume 1.98 MVA okay and the loads are operating at 0.95 power factor to further validate the results, we can also check for the bus terminals, okay? And you can see for each bus terminals, you can see for each bus terminal, we have bus one with three cubicles, bus two with three cubicles, three four, and bus five with two cubicles. And you can see the active power and the reactive power, and also the power factor of the lines. And there is also additional data which can able to give you the apparent power that is your copper losses and etc of this which is in on the specific bus with the cubicles and to further analyze you can also go to see the age elements results you can execute and see your age some age elements results we have load one two three external grid your line 1 2 3 and transform 1 2 and you can see the loading capacities of the lines you see the line 1 is 0.04 percentage and your transformer 1 is loading 1.33 percentage transformer 2 loading only 0.99 percentage and this is active and reactive power and power factors and the rate of current flowing through the each element components okay and we should also able to generate a complete system report which can going to give the voltage profile a voltage and grid interchange and if you want to put check for all the results uh, if you want a specific this one you can go ahead so if i look for the load for results you can see this is a voltage profile and grid summary and we can see this is a bus voltages from 33 to 11 kV and 11 to 400 volt so you can see the per unit is maintaining as a as per the standards everything is point the lowest one is 0 0.98 0 0.988 okay and the grid voltage profile you can see it is less than plus or minus 5 percent deviation as per the IEEE and IEC standards and also you can see the grid results you can see there is no generations and this is a load value for at 400 volt and for 11 kV this is the load value 
and for 33 kV we have an infeed that is external grid is feeding to the network and is also giving the total losses load and etc and this is the total summary result if you look okay so the system having an external infeed of 1.88 megawatt and 0.66 reactive power and the losses is 0 0.1 megawatt and 0 0.3 megawatts and this is a load losses give you okay i think we are quite satisfied with the load flow results now we need to move on to the next part of the exercise that is basically your protection setting for the protection settings first we trying to give the overcurrent protection that we need to use if you look the single line diagram we need to insert your current transformers and the overcurrent relay model which is close to bus 3 and to validate the verify the protection setting for this scenario okay and as part of the manual we also explained the description of the overcurrent relay and the operating characteristics the overcurrent relay will be defined into three categories one is instantaneous or definite relay the second one is a time overcurrent relay and third one is the inverse time overcurrent relay we basically called as IDMT relay this IDMT is further classified into four types is a moderate inverse, very inverse, extreme inverse and directional overcurrent relay the character 6 you can see for different character 6 definite inverse and definite time and the combination definite time inverse so IDMT inverse with instantaneous and the description for each type definite time it means the setting is is going to be the relay operate instantaneously when the current reaches the predefined value that's the definition for the definite current and for the definite time we saying about relay enable the setting to be very cool with the different levels of current using the operating times and inverse time the definition will illustrated here the relay operate in a time that is inversely proportional to the fall current and inverse time with instantaneous it is basically a combination of definite and the inverse characteristics the next part is grading but in this exercise we are not dealing with the grading there are different types of grading is available okay but in the next exercise we more focus on the grading between the grading and coordination between the relays but this exercise we are not involved in any grading but for the theoretical aspect I try to focus and margin between the two successive devices it must be varies between 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 seconds this we called as a grading there are different types of grading current grading time grading and time current grading and the next important things the operating time of the relay will specified according to the IEC standard or either IEEE standards and according to IEEE and IEEE standards the operating time is described as T that is mathematically given in this equation the notations of these symbols will be described here and also the operating time of the relay will change according to the character 6 curve for example you can see there is a different character 6 curve this table will showing a different character 6 curve and the parameters for the character 6 curve alpha beta and l because this alpha and beta and l will use to calculate the time of the operating time of the relay okay now we can move to the dixieland and we include i think you can left click the breaker which is close to the only this breaker okay i think you need to right click the breaker and you go for devices and 
the first we need to use the current transformer so select the current transformer and then there are different parameters that you need to enter for the instrument transformers especially for the CT the best thing you go for a new project type and according to our data if you look here your current transformer data is going to be 200 is to 1 amps and number of phases phase technology 3 ABC and the connection is star okay 200 is to 1 sorry this is CT1 I can say CT1 double click 200 and you make two okay the secondary of the CT is either must be 5 amps or 1 amps but in this case we use 1 amp CTs on the secondary side okay and the number of phases must be 3 and the phase technology must be ABC because this will going to provide the angular rotations okay and it's going to be on bus 3 we are happy with the CTs now we need to include the relay model uh, before we need to include the relay model I also tried to explain how to import the relay model into the Dixalent environment but in my case I already imported the relay model but for you I tried to explore or teach you how to import the relay model to the Dixalent environment it will be helpful when you modeling the network okay to import the relay model first we need to deactivate the project so you go to file the other thing before I'm teaching that one I also make sure uh, to tell you the Dixieland Power Factory I have a database management and it can save the files automatically so you don't worry about you going to lose the network okay so this is a database management if you look here okay I think you can go to file and you can view for okay I will show you the database first we look here file we need to deactivate the project okay once you deactivated then you go to file and then you need to go to import and you can select the first option with coming PFD the relay model actually with the extension of DZ select the first option okay next we have the relay models Okay, I think if you go to your cases, so you see, but in your relay model, you can see this relay models is this folder relay 15.15. This relay models, especially for 751, 487E, and 421, these are the three relay models and Alstom KCG relay model. These are the one we're going to use for this practical manual. But this list will giving the different vendors with the different types of relays. Because I also explore to available all the relay models. Somebody must work on the projects and some other consultancy works. So it might help them. So in this case, we need to go for SEL. SEL is here, switcher electric. And we're looking for 751, the last one. This is a relay 751. So we need to import. If you look here, it directly going to your database administrator, relay library, and switcher electric. But if you go to upload, you say, would you like to replace the existing one? In my case, I don't need to replace the existing one because I have some settings. But in your case, it won't ask you, it import. Okay. In my case, you can say this. So after imported, if you want, you can go to see, for example, if you go to activate project, this is a library is coming up you can see a relay library in the relay library there are re different relays available but in your case under the relay library you are able to see your SEL and in the SEL you see I am using different relays for this exercise we are going to have a SEL sound 51 and in the sound 51 we are going to use sound 51 1 amps relay it is there 
for next exercise we're going to use 487e so the same procedure you follow to import the force of 487e i think this is not next exercise it's the last experiment using differential for the transform of 487e and the third experiment we're going to use your distance relay that is using 4 to 1 so you also import from the same library 4 to 1 but i already imported everything and we are also using your alstom relay model but it is also i will imp, you can import the alstom kcg4112 okay it's not there but probably i can import now quickly cancel file import and I can go to relay library alstom because next exercise we need this one kcgg142 so you just see kcgg okay you see there's nothing there so I can import this one once imported you can see the output window you can see relay library alstom was imported from the output window now we can go to activate project you can see the Alstom folder as well under the relay library previously you don't see GE Alstom but now you can see Alstom but in the next exercise we're going to use KCG 1422 1421 amps relay okay that's fine now we back to our exercise activate the project what project we are there um, what is the name of the project I given Okay, I think we use the project name is exercise one time or current relay settings. Okay, so this is our project name. We activated the project. So now we need to import the relay model. So again, go here, bus three, right click, new devices, select relay model, and then from here you can go and select the new project okay sorry you can select the project type and then we need to go to the relay model and then we go for SEL and 751 one amps relay okay so now the relay settings 751 was imported and also the current transformer if you look here the current transformer already 200 is to 1 amps is in the library i think there are two current transformer one ct is used to measure the currents on the specific location of the network and other is a co ct that is also used to measure the currents on the specific equipment where you loaded in this case you don't worry about the vt because it's purely a over current element you not bother about that and we also make sure the elements that must be setting here we go to the lab manual and come back for the settings of this one okay the current transformer you can see 200 is to 1 amps we don't worry about the vts for this experiment okay if we go back to the manual okay current transformer we did and for the over current relay settings there are two things we want to important first we need to define the phase elements and then we also want to define the ground elements um, i want to give an overview about the phase element and the ground element keep it in mind the phase element is the one if there is a three phase symmetrical fault on any location of the network that can be detected with the phase elements and if we have and any ground faults i think this one is for three phase faults or line to line faults okay but even that is a phase faults but if you have a line to ground fault either a single line to ground fault or double line to ground faults so we need to make sure the settings for the ground elements for the ground faults okay let me move on that so if you look the element we have a stage 1 and stage 2 in phase elements the same thing for ground element as well the idea behind here the stage 1 will try to show you 
your inverse characteristics and stage 2 will expose the definite characteristics okay let us consider this scenario for instance the phase element you can see the current in the primary and the secondary we can see for this primary current or maybe the secondary current is 3.2 amperes and 10 amperes is for the definite current let's give an example quickly mm, let's open in okay okay let's give an example quickly for that before we proceed to that okay okay your curve is supposed to be look something similar like this so it means you have two elements one you're going to define for the element one and element two element one will be your inverse characteristics element two will be your definite characteristics for in this case you see the element one will showing about i think the axis is not here but probably this exercise we have an axis okay can zoom in quickly clearly defined okay for instance you can see the element one will operating an inverse character six with the secondary current of 3.2 amperes so it means from 3.2 amperes is getting here and the definite one will going to be your 10 amperes according to the settings if you look at settings the 10 amperes is going to be your definite current so it means anything below 3.2 amperes will going to be inverse characteristics anything above 3.2 to 10 amperes is going to be a definite characteristics okay i guess you understood okay okay to understand the time over current setting i think first i need to show you the data settings for the time over current relay then we come to the character Cisco. Okay, if you go back to our data setting, keep it in mind for the face elements. For the face elements, we have the currents in primary. Okay. For inverse character six, anything from 640, 640 amperes until 2000 amperes, up to 2000 amperes will going to be your IEC inverse character 6 from 2000 amperes onwards is going to be in a definite character 6 it may be instantaneous for the ground elements keep it in mind anything from 200 to 1000 amperes is going to be inverse character 6 and from 1000 onwards is going to be a definite character 6 it means from 0 to 200 amperes the relay will not trip if the current will reach 200 amperes until 1000 amperes the tripping will be done due to the IC character 6 and from 1000 amperes onwards it's going to be for the definite character 6 for the ground elements and the time you see here for a smaller currents the larger timestamp 0 0.10 seconds for larger current that is 1000 amperes you have less time stamp but in this case for ground elements we make the same setting but for the phase element you can see 0 0.1 seconds for the 640 amperes for definite is going to be 0 0.01 it's very fast okay this we can validate through the curve so keep it in mind 640 to 2000 IEC and 2000 onwards with definite character 6 okay let's show that character 6 quickly Okay, to understanding zoom in this window. Okay, let's see this character six curve. Okay, so the first one, this curve, this curve will showing. Okay, a little bit zoom in. This curve will showing the your ground elements, and this one will showing your inverse and the definite for the face elements. For the face element, what we did, what we see in the in the data set from 0 to 640 
to 2000 amperes that is you see here this is your 1000 amperes and also you must remember it's a time over current plot it means your current must be in x coordinate and time must be in your y coordinates okay continue from 640 to 2000 this is your 2000 this is 1000 and this is 2000 so it means it's coming from this 640 to 2000 you're going to get an inverse characteristics once it reaches the 2000 value the time will not change the current will be constant okay from 2000 onwards you see this is it from 2000 the timestamp will be a constant for this case okay and for the ground elements if you see for the ground elements we already saw the primary current values it means from 200 to 1000 so from 200 to 1000 you're getting an inverse character 6 200 to 1000 this is your 1000 okay you see this is 100 and this is 200 that's why the curve is starting from here 200 to 1000 will be an inverse character 6 from 1000 onwards it will be a definite character 6 okay so that's clearly explaining the combination of inverse and definite for the ground element and the same thing for the phase element inverse and combination of inverse and definite will give you identity characteristics for the phase elements okay move back to the protection settings in Dixieland okay now according to the data set we want to set up your elements value but make sure we make out of service the elements which you are not focusing on for instance in this case we are going to have 51p for the phase element 51p as well as stage 1 is 51p stage 2 we are not considering but only we considering the definite element so this is not in service so we make sure that we taking out of service those who are not interested in these settings so I make sure double click and out of service but 51p you can see according to your data set okay let's move to the lab manual again okay you can see 51 51p1 we need to make the settings 51p1 so the tripping direction is a non-direction I think either you should make a forward or non-directional but in this case is tripping direction we are not considering and the character 6 if you look the manual is IEC standard inverse if you look here IEC class A standard inverse okay and the time setting we need to make sure the time dial and the current setting the current setting in this case we making 3.20 okay if you look the manual here 3.20 the current setting on the secondary side okay so secondary amps and the time dial setting will going to be 0 0.10 okay, you can see here the time dial setting is 0 0.10 okay we are happy about that IEC standard inverse 3.20 and 0 0.10 okay 51p1 and then stage 2 is not active out of service and we also want to make sure for the definite element 50p1 according to the 50p1 direction is none but what is 50p1 the time setting must be from 10 okay secondary amperes is 10 if you look at the manual secondary ampere 50p1 this is your 50p1 your current secondary is 10 amperes and the time dial is 0 0.01 so your time dial is going to be 0 0.01 10 amperes this is 50p 50p1 we happy about that 50p2 is not in service 50p3 is not in service 50p4 is not in service because it provide you stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 but we only considering stage 1 in this case so we removed everything and also 
we want to make sure the other elements like the queue when is not in service so it's ANSI standard we remove them out of service okay we remove them out of service so it's already out of service that's good okay so it means if you see here the tick means it is in service this something like a dash it's called this means it's showing th those elements are not in service okay then we're coming to 51 g1 that is a ground element setting refer back the manual it's a ground element settings so if you look here 51 g1 your 51 g1 is giving 1 ampere secondary okay and 0 0.10 and the current is for the 50 g 5 amperes and 0 0.10 so we make sure 51 g1 and 50 g1 element but first we are focusing on 51 g1 1 amperes and 0 0.10 seconds so and also the character 6 is IEC inverse standard inverse so we come here make sure standard inverse and the current setting as we spoke 1 amperes so 1 amperes and then the time dial setting 0 0.10 okay so 1 ampere 0 0.10 and IC standard inverse for the ground elements inverse happy about that this stage 2 is not in service and then we come down here we are looking for 50 G1 50 G1 in service and we make sure the pickup current for 50 G1 is going to be 5 amperes and the time dial setting is going to be 0 0.10 okay happy about that and this 59 P1 okay this is a over voltage measurement that is out of service we are not focusing on over voltage and also over voltage for the ground elements we are not interested in stage 2 ground element for over voltage make sure out of service 59 pp okay this is also out of service so we make sure we everything is supposed to be out of service those we are not because as I told you this is a multifunctional relay feeder protection multifunctional relay feeder protection relay okay but we basically looking only for the over current element and also phase reclosing we are not interested negative sequence reclosing we are not interested so we make sure out of service neutral reclosing out of service ground reclosing all the reclosing must be out of service and the logic I think in Dix Island we don't worry about that it will build here already in built so we happy about that closing logic also blob it we can leave it as it is assist. settings it will find out the specific cubicle but in logic if you want to if the breaker is trip this relay is giving a tripping signal to the breaker and you want to configure to the specific switch it will configure but in this case it will select automatically so we we'll leave it but just I'm exposing this knowledge okay coming to the review of the protection settings especially for the overcurrent phase and ground elements we make sure the current transformers 200 into 1 amps okay the CT name is also CT1 we can give it for understanding purpose there is only one current transform in this case we don't worry and the core CT remain the same settings as the main CT and then we make sure there are only four elements 51 P1 50 P1 this is for the phase instantaneous and definite for instantaneous IEC standard inverse 3.20 and 1 point sorry 0 0.10 time dial in seconds and for the definite 10 amperes pickup current the time setting is 0 0.10 seconds and all other elements must be out of service and we coming to the ground element 
for the ground element ic standard inverse current setting is 1 amperes time dial is 0 0.10 seconds and for the definite element for the ground ground element for the definite character 6 pickup is 5 amperes and the time setting is 0 0.1 seconds but you can see this is 0 0.1 seconds but the total time is 0 0.12 seconds this 0 0.02 seconds will be the operating contact relay time i think we can see from this basic options if you go to these relay options I think it's here yeah, somewhere. Okay, if you go here and you can see the pickup current time setting 0 0.2 seconds is a default. If you want to change, this is the ratio that giving what is the minimum and maximum range for the current setting and the time dial setting. But if you want to play around the settings, but we make sure if necessary for the specific location of the network, we need if you need to change any settings here, we more than allowed to change but the first thing is we need to understand the settings in the relays i think for the first experiment is just a preliminary knowledge to explore you the protection settings for the over current relay so when you are master in the protection settings then you can go around and play with the relay and change the settings but for now you just keep the and also i can say this option that you can play around Either you can make the settings in terms of the secondary or primary ohm values and etc. But again I strongly recommend once you are mastered in the settings of the relay then you are more than welcome to go around and play with the different settings. Okay, so we are happy about that. The next step we need to create the time over current plot. Okay, the next step um, after you setting the protection relay settings but it's better to conduct the load flow again to verify after you include the protection settings the load flow is conducted successfully okay you can see our load flow is conducted successfully after the protection settings now we need to validate the the protection setting to verify you right click on the cubicle where we have your relay models and select for the show and include time over current plot but you can see the load current is 62 amperes it means the relay is not ripping so we want to know one is for definite and the other one is better to add the labels for this character 6 to add the labels select a specific car and you can go to add the labels here okay that show you this is the relay model it's, but also you can edit these things because I also want to see uh, okay this will show you about what is the character 6 name, your IP settings and the time settings of the relay. Okay. If you want, we can create the local settings as well. Okay. The next, we need to include the labels in order to understand the IDMT character 6 curve and the time over current plot. First, we need to select a specific character 6 curve and we can go for odd label with a defined format to show you what character 6 of this relay is and also if you double click here it will open the settings of this relay but we can see from here this is a phase current 51p1 okay so to know about that we just use a formatted text and we can say 51p1 we can say relay model for, for our understanding 51p1 okay 
it means it is inverse character 6 okay so you can see 51 whatever you typing you're getting your inverse character 6 so it means this curve is showing model relay model 51p1 inverse character 6 and we also want to know the definite one so for instance for this one we we'll select and we we'll label this one here and we also want to know this character 6 so double click you're getting 50p1 okay for face elements So we use the formatted text here. You can say 50 P1. Okay, relay model 50 P1 is for definite. Okay, so we're getting that name out here. So we know this one is a character, so it means. So we have the first character 6 for the face false. Okay, I zoomed in. Okay, let me zoom out. The coordinator. So we can see for the face false 51p1 I see inverse character 6 and from from this point onwards here getting a definite character 6 that is a relay model the definite character is if you want to edit the character 6 you just click here and go to the settings if you want to go to the relay settings we can also go there from there okay next for this one you also want to label for the ground elements so let's say this is your ground elements so we have the ground elements if we click here, it will directly show you 51G1 inverse character 6. So we need a formatted text here. 51G1. Okay. 51G1. G representing a ground element. So inverse character 6. Okay. About that, next we need to have for the definite time for the ground elements so last label. Okay, formatted text. I think it is 50 G1. Okay, definite time 50. G1. You can say that time. Okay, we are happy about that. So we need, we know the four characteristics that we're defining. I took in IEC inverse for the face element and for the definite. This is for the inverse for the ground element. And from here, this is a definite one. Okay. Now we need to apply your fault on the different location of the network to validate the protection setting. First, we make sure to conduct the load flow successful. If you go to the manual, you see the first step to model the network and validate the load flow results. He was happy about that. And we need to conduct and face false and three phase line to ground fault and verify your fault current for three phase and line to ground faults according to different methods okay i will explore about the different fault calculation method based on iec and ANSI method and vd method okay first we can do that this is bus 3 you can right click calculate short circuit the complete method 
there are different method they said either you apply IC method and you can execute the fault and see what the fault current value is you can go to the output window you can see you applied your short circuit based on IC method and find out the results for the short circuit next we need to change to calculate a different short circuit method either an ANSI method execute and you can validate this is your ANSI method okay and the results for the ANSI methods now again go and apply short circuit calculate and VD method you can say sorry three phase short circuit VD method apply and validate your verify your results okay this is your VD method this is short circuit current okay next we need to apply a different line to ground false let's say instead of this one you can say single line to ground fault single phase to ground fault and you can use IC method or you can use NC method it doesn't matter okay let's say we using IC method and we can apply the fault and you can validate your IC method you applied for a phase to ground fault single line, single phase to ground fault and you can see all the results okay so these are the parts they're speaking about different type of short circuit fancy method and everything you done and also you need to include your ANS and calculations okay as part of your chapter one you need to do the ANS and calculation to validate your dick silent results but that is a part of the memo but you need to work out but I will show the snapshot so you need to do the ANS and calculations okay you need to do the ANS and calculation in order to validate the fault current values the reduced equivalent diagram and finally you need to compare the results with ANS on with the different ANSI methods IC method and VD method okay next go to the manual back you need to validate the protection setting okay to validate the protection setting what is the next step okay we include the time over current plant we did the settings for the phase elements we did the setting for the ground elements the setting for the ground elements we did we need to plot the time over current plot we did plot the time over current plot but we need to validate three phase and line to ground falls at bus 3 and bus 4 and verify the tripping time in the over current character 6 I think in the time over current plot for the three phase and ground fault at bus 3 okay that we can quickly validate or verify you can apply bus 3 calculate a short circuit okay Mm, let's use what method they specified you can use any method doesn't matter so I just using three phase short circuit IC stand IC method execute and you need to go to here okay and we also want to set constant that is X values Okay, we can say all current magnitude. Okay, it means you can see the relay is tripping. Okay, the relay is tripping at 0 0.12 seconds, and the fault current value will getting. 1634 amperes. We apply a different types of faults to validate, and also you can see here from here the tripping time of the relay as well. Ok, 
okay now you need to apply a fault on bus 4 that the relay is sitting here and it's the direction we didn't say it's a non-directional means if you apply fault 4 it trip but the relay is sitting here so any fault further downstream this relay will trip but if the fault on the upstream the relay will not sense because it is we are not configured the directional one it's a non-directional one so apply the fault on bus 4 short circuit IC method 3 phase fault execute and valid verify the tripping characters in the time of ground float yeah there we go you can see um, you see this relay that is your phase element we apply a 3 phase fault it means we expecting the tripping must be done for only for the phase faults so you see the phase fault IEC character 6 will tripping at 0 0.32 seconds and then this curve is coming down here and you get a definite element the definite element is tripping at 0 0.1 sec 0 0.03 seconds so it means this is very fast and this will be 3.2 seconds we as we expected these two elements is tripping that is your inverse element and also a definite element at the same time we applied a three phase fault so we expect the ground element doesn't trip so you can see the inverse for the ground element doesn't trip this triple nine means the relay is not tripping and for the definite time you can see for the ground element triple nine it means the relay is not tripping so the g stands for ground so these two ground elements is not tripping and this one is tripping okay we happy now we need to apply a different fault let's say line to ground fault on the same bus calculate short circuit we select for line to ground fault single line to ground fault execute and validate the tripping character 6 we can see the ground elements are tripping now uh, 0 0.2 seconds and also 0. Point 0 0.30 seconds it is a phase to ground so the phase element also tripping and the ground element but according to the current magnitude we need to know what is the phase element and the ground element which are tripping the final step I think we are happy with the protection settings if you want you can apply maybe a fault at different locations yeah and you can apply maybe a different type of fault let's say line to line fault okay two phase short circuit execute and we can go for line to line fault means there is no ground element involved so it means your ground will not trip so you see this ground will not tripping but the line to line element UI inverse is tripping and the definite time is also tripping here okay I think it will expose the knowledge for the general overcurrent protection setting for the face element and the ground elements the last thing we need to if you look at your manual the last point we need to plot the three phase voltage and the short circuit current at bus 3 so there is a separate procedure in order to create a plot in the Dixel end so the next few minutes I will try to explore how to plot the voltage and the current waveforms in the Dixel end environment okay to do that first you need to select any one of these things then you need to create a new page create a new page from that you can see either you need a grid or visual instrument or single line graphic the first thing we need to create a virtual panel so we get this one next we need to create an vi subplots so we can go to vi and subplots but this is maybe let's say for voltage and we need current as well so we need to edit this one and make it 
so once you are in the project next you can create vi subplot then actually in our case we need something okay, quickly show you what you're looking for in our case we need something plot which having a three phase voltage and the currents the voltage must be on the top and there will be a subplots two subplots the down will for the currents so for to do that we go and see happen new vis click this one and this is a bar graph but we need to have a curve one so go and select subplot okay based on the curves so there are different types of models of the curves is available you can select either subplot we see a plot okay so you can see the two subplots one for current and one for voltage now we need to configure the elements so you can edit and add the elements here for that um, before we doing probably we can configure the elements in the grid so actually the project is showing we need to plot the current and the voltage at bus 3 so this is your bus 3 because where we defining your fault we can go and we can go for edit we can want to define the elements first Okay, let's right click your bus 3 and you can go for define and you can go for reserves for RMS and the empty simulations this is bus 3 double click and we will be on variable set sim either current voltage and powers Wait. and we can leave for for all the bus name or bus A, B, C, whatever you defining, you want to do it, okay? Let's do this one. Now we need to select. If you look your graph, what are the elements will be there? This will be okay to zoom in. We looking at your line to line voltages phase A, phase B, phase C and the short circuit current abc at bus 3 okay so line to line voltages phase a phase b phase c so that you can find down there you can scroll down right away and also you make sure that is in kilovolt upper unit it is kilovolt so you can go line to line voltages you can see this is phase A line to line voltage phase A, phase B and phase C okay this one you don't want so you move it back to this system and also we are looking for the short circuit current phase A, phase B, phase C for that we look for the short circuit current I think it is going to be here the short circuit current phase A, phase B and phase C ok so these are the four variables we need to define we are happy about that double check again ok it's already defined phase A, phase B but you make sure you want you want ABC and the M A B C those are the values. Okay, now we need to go to the project. You edit here and come to select our calculations. And you select the element, it's bus 3, happy and select the variable. So what you defined on the grid you can able to see here. So the first is your face A, and we also have need for phase B so append the rows you select the same calculations and select your bus 3 
and select your face B voltage magnitude and again append the rows go for all calculations and select the element bus 3 and select the variable that is so, supposed to be phase C voltage magnitude and the colors also is there but if you want you can change the colors but default I leave it otherwise if you want R Y B so it look like same thing R red for A phase okay if you want you can change to yellow for Y phase and B for blue phase in terms of R Y B okay but this is optional I think you can look for some yellow colors here so you see R Y B but it, it is not necessary it is just optional okay next we need to configure your so you can see your bus 3 phase A B C your voltages and for this plot we need a short circuit so we need to configure the elements again our calculations and we select bus 3 we select the variable that is your phase A current and you can open the rows select for all calculations again go for the bus element bus 3 and this time the variable is supposed to be phase B current again open the rows all calculations bus 3 phase C okay if you want you can change the colors again here but it is not necessary okay I think the last number is 118 we selected so we try to keep on the same one 118 okay okay we are happy now okay now we need to validate or uh, verify the voltage and the current waveforms for the fault condition or for the normal operating conditions Let's, this is the tool that you can go and you can select for RMS and EMT simulation and you can set the calculation time here let's say 0.3 seconds and you just execute the simulation you can go to the plot Okay, we can see from 0 0.1 to 0 0.0 seconds is auto scales so you can see 0.3 seconds but it's getting a straight waveform but we're looking a sinusoidal one like this so we need to go to grid again and we go to the calculation methods okay that's fine I think we need to go to here and make sure the simulation method it's not RMS value we need instantaneous value if you don't select an instantaneous you're going to look the straight line so execute this one and you can go to the project and again you run the simulation for let's say 0.3 seconds but now we are looking at to scale Okay, you can see we are looking at a three phase sinusoidal RYB because there is no fault that's why you can see there is no current waveforms here during normal operating conditions the system is maintaining 11 kV so 1 per unit is 11 kV but if you want you can change this to be instead of this per unit to be KV but what we defined there it's supposed to be in per unit but it doesn't matter if you want you can click and you can change these values if you want because this is defined in per unit can you see but you must go to the grid and change the values to be kilovolt if you want to be in kilovolt but for this we can leave it now next we need to apply a fault so to define the fault according to the memo if you look here 
we have creating a different scenarios that is to validate the three phase and line three phase and line to ground events but in this case if you see from point 1 to 0 point sorry from 0 0.0 to 0 0.1 seconds there is no fault in the system from 0 0.1 there is a three phase short circuit it means that voltage goes down and the three phase currents is built up here but without fault or condition the current is zero up to 0 0.1 seconds okay from 0 0.1 second the fault is building up and the fault in the system for once 0.1 seconds so 0 0.2 second the fault is cleared so it means the fault current goes zero and the system is try to build up the voltage okay when the system is building up the voltage up to 0 0.2 there is no fault the system is fully recover the voltage and 0 0.2 seconds we introducing a line to ground fault on phase a so that's why that phase a voltage goes down but other two phases will remain same and the phase a current is built up and after 0 0.3 seconds okay i think after 0 0.4 seconds the fault is cleared and the system try to build up the total simulation time here they used 0 0.5 seconds so to do that first we need to define so right click the bus and you go to define and then you can go for the short circuit okay so we need to create a short circuit from three phase short circuit and we can say this you see say what time is it supposed to be let's say 0 0.1 seconds we creating from 0 to 0 0.1 second there is no fault but 0 0.1 seconds we creating a three phase short circuit okay and again we go here and we need to define a short circuit event and we need to clear the fault which you defined okay we need to clear the short circuit the three phase short circuit introduce 0 0.1 and it will be cleared in 0 0.2 seconds it means between 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 there is a short circuit in the system by 0 0.2 the short circuit is cleared and let's leave it next you need to define then ground faults so let's say you want to define a single phase to ground fault so it means we can create 0 0.3 seconds we leave from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 seconds the system to build up the voltage by 0 0.3 seconds we can initiate a ground fault on phase a we can do it for phase a b c but in this case well, let's leave it as phase a and we need to clear the ground fault again go there we need to define a short circuit event and we need to 0 0.4 seconds we clearing the short circuit which we defined already 0 0.4 seconds we clearing okay in order to see all the events that you applied you click here you see here so 0 0.1 there is a short circuit introduced 0 0.2 seconds there is a short circuit cleared 0 0.3 seconds you, I, if you want you can click here okay if you go and rename it accordingly okay this is a three phase short circuit we rename it so it's introduced 0 0.1 if you click here the three phase short circuit you see this cleared at 0 0.2 seconds and if you click this next to event it introducing a line to ground fault on phase at 0 0.3 seconds and the next one is clearing the ground fault at 0 0.4 seconds okay so this is a tool that we can see whatever the false is if you want to remove anything you can also click here to remove or hide just leave it now okay now we need to go to the simulation and make sure your simulation method will be instantaneous if it is rms we will get a straight line okay and go to the simulation so our total time we need to include the time which is greater than 0 0.4 seconds because our ground fault is clearing 0 0.4 seconds so let's say 0 0.5 seconds and run the simulation and go to your plot you can auto scale these things okay you can auto scale 
okay we need to expecting a voltage and the current waveforms but it's looked like the current waveform is not generated let's go to the grid and look the variable that we define define rms md simulations to bus 3 from there we looking on the rms simulation and the bus variable we looking okay we need to select for the all variables for your short circuit current but for phase A, phase B, phase C so okay and the electromagnetic see we selected your per unit voltages but if you want you can select your line voltages you can unselect these ones so it means you make sure you have a phase voltages sorry line to line voltages that is this one line to line voltages under the EMT simulation tab and also we need to select your short circuit currents phase A phase B phase C so make sure this is line to line voltages phase A phase B and this is a short circuit current I think this is in per units but we looking for in amperes to understand better the fall current value according to the locations but we don't need so we need only these six variables so these ones we don't need so we can send it back those values okay so in the EMT simulation make sure that you select all buses and you also select a current voltages then we can look for your short circuit current A, B, C in kiloamperes and also you look for the line to line voltages in kilovolts that is these ones your line to line kilovolts oh I see I remove those things your line to line voltage but this must go out So when you compare you can see in EMT simulation tab you need to see the six variables the first three voltages line to line voltages in kilovolt ABC and the short circuit current in ABC phase ABC but it must be defined under the EMT simulation make sure that all bus all phases will be selected and the variables is star okay now we are happy about that so we redefine the values here so we can see we need to redefine these values edit okay probably we need to change this to be line to line voltages okay I think it's not updated let's see quickly define Here we can see okay line to line voltages the short circuit current it is right let's do the simulation to update low flow did go to the project there we can edit your script and you can change the values this is plus 3 is right then you can change here to be line 2 line voltages oh the subplot is not updating because it's still in per unit and you can't see the IHC current okay Yeah, you need to 
edit it and select UISGA and this is face B and this is your face C okay 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 we make sure that we changing the variables you can see this is a line to line voltage on phase A which you defined in the grid and this is a line to line voltage on phase B and this is a line to line voltage on phase C now let's say we conduct a load flow okay and the total simulation time let's say 0 0.05 seconds without any fault in the system you can say it's, it's building up this is the zoom to x axis and y axis you can see there is no fault and the system is generating 0 0.05 seconds the voltage which is shown in 11 kV see this is 11 kV in kilovolt and there is no short circuit current it is e power 0 to is almost like negligible amount of current so load current is fine now we also want to validate you see this is a short circuit this is a three phase short circuit it is executed on 0 0.1 seconds and there is a clearing of the short circuit in 0 0.2 seconds and this is the event that we defined single phase to ground fault on 0 0.3 seconds and 0 0.4 seconds it is clearing the fault okay now we need to apply the simulation the fault is there so you just say let's say 0 0.5 seconds we are applying a three phase fault and line to ground fault so when you execute we can see the system yes it is 0 0.5 seconds execute and we need to auto scale zooming I don't know what is going on here we need to auto scale the zooming to get your x and y axis so you can look from 0 to 0 0.1 seconds there is no system there is no fault on the power system so the system voltage maintains stable 0 0.1 seconds you introduce a three phase short circuit the system voltage goes down and parallelly the fall current is introduced in the system and you can say the fall current is approximately close to 10.0 kilo amperes so then after 0 0.2 seconds the three phase fault is cleared and the system is building up the voltage to be back to 11 kV and after 0 0.3 seconds we introduce your fault on phase A single line to ground fault on phase A it means the phase A voltage collapse and you can see the phase A current is built up and 0 0.4 seconds we clear the single line to ground fault and the system try to build up the three phase voltage again so that is the concept the last step in your project that is described you will able to get the like this if you want to label this values to see you can label it for instance you click here you can click any one of the waveforms and you're going to add the labels here so it will show you what is that value is showing only bus 3 it is editable format you can go and edit the user format you can you can also include the okay we can also so you can add the values with the current so you can just click just left click on the plots for instance for this one i want to know the value i can go this a defined format i can say add labels with current value so i can put it here it show you what is the current value it means 14.16 volt kilovolt at 0 0.2 second the same thing you can do it for the current for instance if I want to seek this current I can select and I can go add values with the current one then I can see what is the magnitude of the 
Theranos. So this is the one that is described in your lab manual. For the memo part, I'm not providing the memo for you, but you need to watch this video and understand. The last one, we also want to look the relay wiring diagram, which is shown in the appendix 1.1. In order to do that, you can go to this model here and edit the devices. If you edit devices, you can see what are the element that is available on that cubicle. You have a relay model, click the relay model. Okay, before that, you can click, you can right click the relay model and then you can show. Okay, either you can add a time over current plot or existing protection. But we looking, okay, show graphics. So make sure in the left side you click, right click and go to show graphic. You see the show graphic will show you the relay wiring diagram I think I think I can close this one quickly so this is a navigation panel will show you the relay wiring diagram this is a one which showing how the CTs and PTs because the relay have a hardware with a specific component that is wired inside the relay and this is a wiring diagram will describe it but I strongly advise in order to learn the wiring diagram of this relay you need to read SEL 751 relay manual which is available in the switcher website in order to download the manual you need to be registered and download the manual and read the described detail for this wiring diagram of the relay model okay so according to this description it described the last step is this one and the conclusion from this we can see we applied a three-phase fault at the different location using different method IEC and VD method and also we do the Anson calculation for single phase and ground fault single phase to ground fault and three phase we compared the excellent result with the Anson calculation and we also familiarize ourselves with the protection settings for this relay and we validate the tripping time of the inverse and the definite characteristics that is combination is IDMT characteristics in the time over current plot. So that's giving a conclusion of this project. Okay, I just showing the tabs that we included. The last thing I also want to show you if you want to export this model, we make sure that this option is called as a pack which can going to pack all the frames which is coming to the relay model to quickly show the procedure how to do it right click here go to the edit devices go to the relay model and then from this relay model you click here if you click you can see this option called as pack do you remember you guys imported the relay model from the directory which you specified for the nodes that is your O drive in the Belleville campus you imported the relay model from there otherwise you can download the relay model from the blackboard and you can import the relay model so once you imported the relay model but myself I already used the relay models which is available in the database manager in the Dix Island which I imported a long time back so your case for your case if you import a newly you can see this option called as pack it is great for me it means I packed but you guys didn't do it so it's it appears like enable so you need to click this pack icon then the relay model will be incorporated this is very important when you export this file to your different computers or in a different workstation you need to work if you don't pack again you need to go and you need to make the settings for these elements what we done in this exercise but if you pack the the settings will be comes with these frames and the pack together so you don't need to model the relays again you just need to configure the relay so it's very important before you export you need to pack and the next step i also want to quickly show you how to export the or copy the results in order to produce the report for your lecturer so uh, for any different case you want to export the results and store it in your database so for instance if you want to generate the protection setting in this drop down menu you can go and select for the protection 
from the protections next is make sure that is in the protection next it, there is icon is called as output protection setting if you click in this case i want to see what is the instrument transformer setting and overcurrent protection setting i can execute this file once i executed i can see you see this is your protection setting overcurrent element see the overcurrent element is sitting on bus 3 it is a SEL sound file one relay model and this one will showing your st stages that is stage one you have your in instantaneous 50p1 and your inverse 51p1 and the current settings in terms of primary and secondary and the time and also the type of curve that you apply do you remember when you speaking about the settings this everything you can able to export for your reports and if you further move down here you can see the direction is non-directional and also you can see the ground elements that is for inverse and definite 51 g1 is inverse 50 g1 is definite and you can see the current and the time settings and also the characteristics that you applied if you want to copy this one either you can export in a different format for instance i want to export to the excel format i can go and click and it will open in the excel format so you need to copy the settings from the excel let's say to the word document or any other document that you need to create or to store the results for the settings for the specific exercise just taking some few minutes to exporting these things okay quickly wait for that you see your excel is opening and you can see the settings for this we have already exported in the excel format if you want you can copy it in a word document or whatever you can do it the same thing i can close the protection settings you remember we also want to see the ct settings that is instrument transformer so in this case your ct is sitting on bus 3 and it is named as ct1 and we have two coast ct and co ct you remember we we make the setting 200 amps to 1 amps of the secondary primary is 200 secondary is 1 amps so we can also if you want you can export as excel but i already show you how to do for these things you can carry on then the last thing from the output window if you want to copy this one um, either you can save as this one otherwise you can use a snipping tool or any better tool that you can use to copy these things so for example i want to copy this one to be a word document let's say in all your windows you can go for the search you can look for the snipping tool okay you can look for the snipping tool then you can snip these frames whatever the content that you want for your report you can see you copied here and then you can go edit copy and let's say you want to paste it in a word document let's say i want to paste it here let's paste it here to get the results okay the same thing if you want to copy there otherwise you can use a paint and print screen whatever it's suitable for you you can go ahead and also for the dixieland if i want i can want to new then i can snap this one as well okay the draft model then it's coming here i can go to edit and copy and i can go to any word file that i can paste it down here okay so this is options you can do it the last step so i think we we spoke everything from the scratch how to model the network in the Dixon environment and how to make the settings of the each elements your transformers lines and bus bus the power system data and we also spoke about how to make the protection settings for your relays and cts and etc okay and we also validated the time over current plot for a different scenarios for line to ground fault and line to phase falls and also we spoke about how to draw the plot for the three phase current and voltages for no, for the faulted conditions or for normal operating conditions and we spoke the procedure how to include the plot in the disk and we also show how to look how to see the wiring diagram of the specific relay that you're using 
in this case SL 7.1 okay that's coming to the conclusion of exercise 1 the last step I want to show you how to export this file to export the file first you make sure you deactivate the project once you deactivate the project go to the file and go to export and then you can go for the data pfd and you look your file name you remember mine i used in administrator one and the file we playing around xsx one time over current release setting you can just click export and it's coming let's say i want to export to desktop i choose the location where i want to export in this case it's a desktop and then you also want to make sure that you select export the data in the retention period and export all the data files example result files everything and there is also option coming to export to the previous version of the power factory if you go down but i am using 15.2 that's why my computer showing i can export to 15.1 or earlier version 14.0 but in this case i'm not going to use anything down because it is also strongly recommend are advised to use the latest version of the power factory because if any bugs in the previous version that can be overcome with the new update and the service packs so for more information you need to look back the Dixieland website to get the latest one but in our CPUT Bellevue campus we already have the academic 75 user license which is installed is a server license which is installed in the programming lab one and two but in the blackboard also i advised you the procedure how you can able to install for your own laptops and you can use a wi-fi signal or you use a ethernet signal but make sure when you use in your laptop you not you need to be connected to the cpt network because it is a license that is managed managed by the cpt network administrator okay so once you select these two things you just execute so you can go and see the output window you can see the output window the last one we have exported the file so you can see they showing about data successfully exported to the desktop and this is a file name go and look for the desktop quickly okay we need to refresh the desktop once you refresh this is a one that we done exercise on relay pft so if you want to take this one to a different pcs or different workstation you want you copy this file and again go to the dixieland and you need to you don't need to start from the scratch you go and need to import you need to import the file the specific file you can select you can select the time of current and import and play around okay that's thing i want to say the second aspect i also want to advise you quickly read the manuals okay the final thing i also want to recommend or to advise the references that you need to follow for the further study you need to look the perfect manual this is a user manual for the pixel and perfect 15 or you can use the 2016 version as well if you go to this power system simulation system analysis and functions tab this is described you how to do the low flow and this a manual describe about the short circuit calculation and etc for the protection settings if you go to define a protection setting chapter 39 it depends on protection is speaking about the introduction about the time over current protection settings and etc okay and also it giving the how to include your time distance plot diagram and also distance and etc okay so i will strongly recommend to use the power factory ma manual to explore the further knowledge and also i will recommend a uh, two textbooks um you see this is a textbook power system analysis by using Harvard Sarun and Pakede. Um, if you go to the front, you can see this is a textbook. It's a standard and recommended textbook, not only for the practical, to explore the better understanding of the protection system and the relaying scheme. 
okay and uh, you can go this textbooks you can either look from the library you see the explaining about the protection coordinations and instantaneous and time over current relay you can see the instantaneous and time over current relay for a uh, different applications they explaining the character Cisco and this other textbook you can also rec I will also recommend it's called Lewis Backburn let's go to the introduction to show you the book the protection relaying principle and application third editions this is also a standard and nice textbook okay um, they also discussing about okay it's from CSFS you can look from the library for this textbook as well this is also a good textbook Lewis Backbone and you can go for the specific chapter as well to learn the to learn the protection coordination okay I think the answer is specifying this chapter chapter 12 chapter 12 line protection they are discussing about the coordination fundamentals and general setting criteria phase time over current relay setting ground time over current relay setting phrase and instantaneous so you can explore your knowledge for the further reading from some of these references thank you and we can meet you on the second exercise but in the second exercise I'm not going to discuss about from the scratch we will only explore the protection settings of the especially the coordination of the time over current relay and this protection setting and implementation in Excellent. I hope you enjoy this presentation and also I guess you update the knowledge the best thing is first you need to study the materials and the second thing you need to play around the softwares to explore this knowledge and once you are strong in the simulation side then you need to use the the physical relay and the test injection device to validate the protection settings for the specific relays and this application principles thank you